Here is an Excel dashboard showing the count of Twitter messages mentioning COVID by country of origin during the last five minutes. The data is automatically refreshed every five minutes. The table to the left uh, is the source data, which is linked to the Meltwater platform. Um, the refreshing scheduling is managed using a Power Automate flow. Here we are on the Meltwater platform, its website, in the developer portal section of the site. Um, we've already created the search that we're going to use as the basis of uh, the REST API URL. So we're on the analytics console part of the website, and this is how we're going to generate the URL. So we select the uh, search, uh, type in the word, and then select the search. We can leave the dates as is because we're going to dynamically change them in the Power Automate flow. And the analysis, we're going to select top locations. Source is going to be Twitter. And size is going to be 100 rows. You don't really need to go beyond that. Uh, level is going to be country. Um, and then we click the view API request code. And it displays below. We're going to use this as the uh, content uh, URL for the Power Automate flow. Let's now have a look at the Power Automate flow. So the first action is a trigger, as always, and in this case it's a recurrence set at five minute intervals. Um, what follows next is a series of compose actions to generate the parameters of the URI. So that's the start date and end date, including the start time and end time. So the first one is simply the uh, obtaining the date, um, the time, uh, UTC now, um, the end date compose action here, sorry, time just takes the time and the date extracts the date portion of that uh, UTC now result. So in compose start day one, we are subtracting five minutes from the end date. So because UTC now is always the current present time, it means that start day one is always five minutes behind that as well. It's not a static value. So let's move for on in the flow and see what we have next. So we have the HTTP connector. Um, and within here, we have got um, the URI and how we generate that. And that's, uh, we also have the API key and the uh, header and the accept header, which is um, um, an application JSON value because the, va the uh, data we're getting back from um, the Meltwater um, platform will come in JSON format. So let's have a look at how we've generated the URI. We can see here, I'm using a, a concat function. Um, we have the URI part, which is HTTPS API.meltwater.com. And then the long digit within that is the search ID. So that's the search that we created specifically for this demo. Um, and we can see that um, the URI is made up of um, outputs of the um, date and time start and end. So we can see here that we've got um, also uh, the time zone is Europe and the source is Twitter, size is 100 and level is country, which is uh, what we picked in the platform itself. So moving on, we have a couple of actions here which are to uh, manipulate the JSON. Um, and then we finally have a Compose Full JSON here, which is um, building the JSON string in the correct format. And then from there, 
we have an action to create the CSV table from that uh, JSON. And uh, this action is needed because we're going to input that into our Excel uh, file. Now, the next action is a run script. So this takes as an input the previous CSV table, as we can see here. The name of the script is input CSV melt water. And the file that we're going to apply the script to is called meltwater twitter COVID .xlsx. Um, And then the, the flow terminates there. So let's have a look at the flow after it's run. And we can see its inputs and outputs. So here's a recent uh, flow run. And we can see the, the recurrence is five minutes. And then we can see that we've got the now date time. Uh, the end date is just the date po portion. The time is just the time portion. The start date is, is uh, the five minutes uh, before the um, end. So we can see there, then the start date, which is the date portion of that and the time portion of that as well. So with the HTTP trigger, we will have got the uh, JSON responding from that. Uh, we can see that here as well. Uh, here, so we have United States as the, the first row. Um, we have its um, four fields there as well. Um, and then we can see the very last row in this return JSON was Libya. So let's um, have a look now at the CSV table that was returned. So you can see um, it's been generated from the JSON like as so. So we see United States is the top and Libya is at the bottom. So, um, and then we have the script as well. So we can see the various parameters there and we can see um, that this was the input and the script itself generated one output, uh, which was the refresh date. And that's um, used within the workbook itself. So let's now have a look at the Office script, the Excel script that was used uh, in this uh, flow. So here we are in the Excel online workbook um after the flow has run so let's have a look at the script um, that was used in the flow so uh within it i have uh, put some sample data um, i used when uh, building the script because i needed to know the format but it's quite useful for us because we can see um, how the, um, the data, sorry, looked like when it was presented, inputted to the script. And we can see that there is a carriage return and a new line character within the CSV. And it's this that we're going to use to split uh, this string um, for processing. So let's have a look. So we declare uh, the sheet as normal. That's how we refer to the sheet object. Um, we take the CSV input, which was a string. Um, we make sure it's a string format uh, within the script. Uh, we test whether it's uh, zero length or not, because otherwise we shouldn't be running the script. Um, we clear uh, the table of data um, here. So we then split the um, CSV input string according to the presence of carriage return and a new line character. This um, action creates an array and that's why I've called it input array. So for, it's gone from a string to an array. Um, now within um, the array, we can call functions like length which is what we're going to uh, use in the following subsequent loop. Now in this loop, uh, we have um, 
another loop and this is uh, because we're iterating through every row and every column and the first loop is for the row iteration and the loop within that is for the iteration of each column um, and it's using um, functions to determine the length of um, the table in terms of columns and rows. Again, we're splitting, um, we're using the split function here again, but this time according to comma, and that's after it's already been split by the, um, the carriage and new line um, characters. So after that, we then auto fit the columns um, and then we paste in the uh, last refresh date. Thank you.